This conference will now be recorded. Of what's that? Regular call meeting, March 4th, 2021, at the 6.01 p.m. Call to order, roll call. Ivan Sandoval? Present. Uh, Maribel Diaz? Absent. Sonata Solis? Present. Black Goya? Present. Cesar Rodriguez? Absent. Adolfo Arreaga? Absent. Do I have a quorum? Item uh, 1B, public comment, Mr. Sainz? There were no comments that were for requested comments. Okay. Item 2, minutes. Item A, approval of minutes for the November 12, 2020 Alba Special Board meeting. So moved. With the uh, motion by Sondawad, we need a second. Second. By Solis. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item B, approval of minutes for December 17, 2020, our special board meeting. So move. Motion made by Sondavad. Um, for the record, we have Maribel Diaz coming in at 6.02. I uh, need a second for item B. Second. By Solis. All in favor, signal by Pathé Knight. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item C, approval of minutes for February 4th, 2021, our board meeting. So moved. Motion made by Sondawad. Need a second? Second. Second by Sudeev. All in favor, signal by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item three, presentation by Performance Service Inc. and all of Smart Meter Program. Mr. Sign. Yes, uh, Certain members of the board, uh, as we had a presentation by CSI at last month's meeting, uh, we have uh, a follow up to that based on the requests and the comments and the questions that were brought up during the presentation. We have uh, Samir Khan from uh, CSI, he should be on the video soon, and he will make a presentation. And I think Bill worked with the PowerPoint that he's. Uh, Sharing with us is the panel. David, are you there? You want me to get the lights? Good afternoon. No. I am here. Can you all see it? <laughs> okay. Uh, we uh, thank you, Mr. Signs. Uh, as as Mr. Signs noted previously, we were talking with you four weeks ago today. Uh, and we present the same presentation. The presentation has been updated based on the latest and greatest measurement and verification data. At the time, we were approximately 40% of the way through taking measurements and verifying the accuracy of the new meters that had been installed over the last year and a half. And we did complete that, and that's we're updating the report with that information, as well as additional information that was provided by Juan concerning water sales in 2020. Next slide. This is again just a summary and we'll go through these slides but we'll go through them fairly quickly since you've seen really all the slides before we just will highlight the updates. The scope of work on this project was water meters and AMI by 15,567. Solar PV of 275 kW at two different locations total, and the LED lighting 678 retrofits or new fixtures. Next slide. And this is again the summary of the guarantee for the project. It includes both increased revenue, energy savings, operational savings, capital cost avoidance. Overall, the dollar is about $1.2 million. Next slide. The basis of the guarantee on the water meters, and this is again where we've got some really good news um, before it's even got better than it was last time we talked, but the basis of the water meter savings is making sure you've got good, accurate water meters. Previously, many of your water meters were not accurate as we highlighted previously and we'll highlight again. So we've replaced the meters. We've tested a total of 125. We've tested all sizes of meters. And the meters are coming in at 99.9% .9 accuracy measurements. Again, 
that's that's the highlight there. Um, I got to go by uh, uh, eight mil hundred twenty five meters, sir. Were they just random? They were random selections of meters that could be tested. That is correct. So actually, we ended up making a random just to be a little more specific on that. We did a random sampling to start with, and we took that same random sampling again and tested those same uh, meter locations. Obviously, it's not the same meters, but the same places we tested before, we tested with the new meters. Does that help answer that question? Uh, yes, I think. But do, do we have like a list of meters that are Yes, we can. Uh, we can provide that. We definitely have that. Okay. Uh, next slide. The basis of the, as noted previously, the basis of the guarantee for the solar and the PV is efficiency changes. So we're, for instance, on the solar PV, we'll be measuring the efficiency, and that's uh, the forthcoming measurement uh, for the solar PV to verify that it is producing the energy that we are expecting it to produce or guaranteeing it to produce. Next slide. And so summary of the performance that we've seen and uh, have been able to document is the water meters are exceeding the guaranteed accuracy. Water revenues have increased based on the consistency of the projections. Solar PV, from what we're seeing uh, based on the years worth of data, we're 22.5% exceeding production guarantees. And the LED lighting is meeting the guarantee. Uh, next slide. And these are just kind of the going the numbers based on the calculations. All these numbers have remained the same since last time we met, although the water meter AMI savings has actually gone up a little bit because the actual final measured efficiencies of the or accuracies of the water meters did increase. So that went to eight hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars per year. Total benefit a little over nine hundred thousand dollars in energy revenue. Next slide. Again, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier, the existing meter accuracies. If you're looking at the left-hand side, that is that graph. The blue represents the accuracy of the existing meters that were tested, and the green, the accuracy of the new meters. You can see that somewhat of an increase on your three-quarter inch meters. The big increase was on one-inch meters, two-inch meters, four inch meters and six inch meters. And over to the right hand side is what the actual accuracies measured by in the field for the post meter uh, testing were for each of the different sizes. Next slide. So to recap, the guarantee on the revenue out for water revenue was 572,000. Again, all this is based on your previous rates, the rates that were in place when this project began. The guaranteed verification was based on new meter accuracy. Um, calculations have not been adjusted for customer growth or the higher billing rates. Next slide. And this is that calculation that was used in the original analysis that documents the third column over again, documents the existing meter accuracy, which we just reviewed. And previously, the fifth column over was the projected meter accuracy, and that which is now referenced the actual measured meter accuracy. And this, as you can see at the bottom right hand side, calculates to $877,000 per year. Uh, next slide. And these two slides are just, again, 
we, as you know, we can't control the weather, we can't control what customers are actually using, but this is information provided by Juan um, concerning actual water revenues. So if you look at the dotted blue line, those are actual water revenues. Now they've been updated for 2020 with the actual numbers. These numbers are probably a little different than what you've seen because they do exclude the emergency water sales that were done earlier in 2020. So excluding those numbers, you're a little at $9,047,000 worth of water revenue. If you further back out the 903 meters that you have installed since this project began, starting back in 2019 and then also 2020, that's the orange line, and that equates to the essentially 8.9 to 8.875 million dollars of revenue, excluding those new added meters. And then the last slide is very similar. Sorry, next slide. This last slide is very similar in that the orange line is the projection with the not the projection, the actual water revenue, including this project, as reported, this does include your emergency water revenue. So this is the actual number, probably what you're used to seeing, almost the $9.3 million of water revenue in 2020. Again, going off the baseline, including that additional water revenue, where you would be without this project. Again, this we don't control the water rain and so on, but this gives you at least a, an idea of the $8.3 million where the difference is. And that was the last slide. Any uh, questions? Mr. Deming. Yes. I get the, 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 the water meters and I get the MD light on the solar panels. Is there some type of dashboard uh, where our ratepayers, where uh, our, the board members and our administration can log in to see how much those water panels are producing per day? Uh, so I want to make sure I um, I heard that clearly. So when it comes to the solar side, there is a site that you can log into, and you right. can actually see the information, uh, whether it's a daily basis, you can select a monthly basis, you can select an annual basis. So this is a very easy site to, to navigate and see the exact performance of your solar system. Was that? Do we have a website Not, not the access. Are we planning to do that for our and for, I mean, the community in general? Sure, we can put it on there. Obviously, it's just that to make sure we're monitoring it, but we can add it on for anybody to next. We'll work with David Tim and get us the portal or the link to be able to do Okay. Another question is, uh, Mr. Fines, yes, uh, the meter readers. Presentation that was done back when it got approved was that we were going to eliminate meter readers. Obviously, we still have all of them on board, right? Yeah, and we're they're, they're, that performing, foundation. they're performing other services because they do, they're the ones that also put meters in. And disconnect. And, 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 and that, that's still a, a, a store because uh, we, we, we started disconnecting again, and that's what they've been doing. I mean, of course, we stopped during the street. But uh, we get about 50, 50 meter uh, reconnections every month. And we get about, uh, I'd say it's around 50 disconnects and reconnects. So they're out there doing that now. And that's all they do. Uh, they don't read the meters anymore, obviously. Uh, but Mr. Alonso oversees them and they've been kept busy just doing that. We've been growing at about a 2% annual growth rate. And then we have several that have been, uh, I guess, repairing or replacing the antenna on the meter boxes also. Yes, yeah, so we obviously have damages to them. Some of the customers uh, have damaged them because they're cutting the grass and they don't, they go over it or they, they turn over the dig. And other ones just cutting them off. And we know exactly when that happens because we get them disconnected. Which is fine if I is there something where, where we could make it? I mean, I get called all the time when they, and I have one in my house, I think we all do. Um, when you open up, it, it's, a, it's a little it's a little string, man, that can be chopped off. Is there something where, where we can, like, put it, like, in a conduit pipe, or, I mean, are we thinking to do something like that? 
but it, it, it's extremely flimsy. I know we're charging people every time that that line breaks. Uh, so you know, I talk to them. them. I don't need educate them. Just kind of stay or stay out of the meter box because I don't know how the blade is. Sometimes they'll pick it up, but we, you know, it, it's something that's always been there. Whether it was, but they're not covered. No, they're covered. Yeah, yeah they're, they're covered, but look, if I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. What, what happens is that a, a lot of people, they don't have a cutoff at their house. They have to go directly to the meter to cut it out when they have a leak. So older people, I mean, when they get down there, when they pick it up, it rips the, 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 the cord up. And that's what's been happening. And I've had like four or five situations like that. Yes, and we work with them. And that's what they're doing. They yeah. that's what they're doing versus they were cutting. They got cut off by by a lawnmower or right. some of them just automatically just cut them off thinking, okay, I'm not gonna, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna right. get red anymore. And what's the cost of that? Oh, it averages uh, on, the, on, on what part of the equipment is it's going to go from okay. 75 to 250. I, I got some kind of a $250 yeah. we can't, we can't. Okay. So they damage the lids, but the antenna, you know, sometimes they even damage the meter itself. And, uh, and so they're out there Having to do that, it, it's like this past uh, freeze. They were out there having to turn off the valve because customer side breaks or something. Mm -hmm. So those are still things. We don't call them meter readers anymore. We call them meter tech. And uh, we had a couple of them that went to other parts, other departments like plants or and so on. This, 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 but we did not fire anybody. So we do. We knew we were going to have to keep a uh, liberal meter tech for that purpose. But, uh, you know, we can educate them in regards to, uh, in regards to working around the meters, in regards to trying to find something at times, we'll have to work with the meter, the people that sell us the meter, uh, how it could be better protected. You know, because the antenna kind of sticks to the bottom of yeah. the meter, and that's what leads uh, to the antenna that we have around the meter. Mr. Sainz, what about the, the, the people who have water leaks during the, the freeze? Um, how are we going to do it to, to, I mean, are we going to give them credit for that, or, uh, I mean, uh, how does that work? I'm glad you asked that, but I, we're going to have that discussed in item eight. It's an, uh, it's no, not on the right way. It wouldn't be just an item, but we're going to discuss it, how we can address it, the VBA. Okay. We're always here to make sure we, we try to make, not impact the customer's money. Thank you. So we'll Juan, what's our loan payment on this? And they said every... Quarter, or is it how many months, uh, half a year, or a year? For, for me, it's a particular project. Yeah, because I know what there's two <coughs> loans, right? We got phase one, phase two. That one is basically two, twice a year, but what we need every month, we get money aside to our particular uh, payment. So even though the payment is not due in a month, we can get every month. It's already budgeted, no? Yeah, so, yeah, it's in our budget. Do you have an estimated uh, cost? The cost of that yeah, month? Oh, uh, if not, you can give us the, uh, you can give it to us later. Okay, I'll email it to me, you can email it to me. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Juan. I just want to give you a diagram of the meter here, so. Okay. Well, basically, this is the meter, and, and the meter, and here's the, the disc, and uh, it's right here is the, the antenna. But that's in a perfect world. I'll be here in a perfect world. <laughs>
I have a, a question there, Tamiana. Uh, I know it was asked the, the number of meters that you tested and where they were. Could you give us the number of meters per meter size that you tested? as well yes would you I, I can provide all that if that's if that's okay yes right off the top of the head in the one inch three quarters or whatever it might be we want to know how many any other questions we can for an hour or later later oh, later you can you can get it for us later now oh, I'm okay. Any other questions, comments? I'm good to be good. David? Yes, I thank you, David. And if we have anything else, please forward that information to us. And if we have more, we'll forward to you so we can go ahead and disseminate that information to you. Great. We'll forward that information in the email. You all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Under number four, presentation by KPAC Consulting. Group on Alwasad water rights, rate, and planning. Science. Yes, Mr. President, members of the board, I spoke to just know them today, and uh, it was pointed to try to have a presentation today as well as we had discussed at the presentation last month. Uh, obviously, as we know, the, he, he's out of Dallas, so the three hit him is part of it. I mean, we all got affected in regards to uh, uh, whether we're behind a week or a week and a half based on how we were affected. But he asked uh, that uh, that if uh, we could postpone his, his uh, presentation to the next one, and uh, he'll have everything ready. He said he could probably send something to us in about two weeks, and uh, this is the draft that we can maybe go over it and before he finalizes his presentation. Two weeks? Yes, sir. Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Everybody's good? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next item number five, status M2 engineering on capital improvement plan. Mr. Middle. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we're
slide is just basically identifies your, your CCN. That's basically everything in, in green is the, the area that, that our third services. The following slide has uh, a facility plan, and this basically identifies the same thing. The CPN in blue identifies your elevated storage tank, your booster station, and, and, and that's basically what this, what this slide identifies. If you go to the next slide, uh, going back to uh, what Mr. Science was saying, the way we came up and calculated the, the future growth uh, to project for these capital improvement plans is, uh, is for the next 10 years. And so the regional, the, the Texas Water Development Board 2016 regional plan provides a service to approximately 52,129 customers. That's, that's based on their plan. So if you look at fiscal year 2008, you had, and these are actual numbers, in 2008 you had 13,660 active water meters. In 2018, you had 15,731. And in 2020, you had 16,508. So based on, based on the growth, uh, that's how we determined that it's a 2.1% projected growth for the, for the following 10 years. And if, so, if, so you're, you're saying the, you just took the average of those? No, we have we actually had it from 2008 right. all the way to 2018, and now uh, because we started on this in 2019, and so we're, now we we added the 2019 and 2020 numbers, and so 2.1. But that that's the basically the, the the average growth from actual numbers from 2008 all the way to 2020, and also in compared to the numbers that the 2016 regional regional plan that that the uh, water development board. I mean, it looks like I'm just seeing real round numbers here. I mean, you basically grow 2,000 customers in a 10 year period of 08 to 18, and you've grown half, almost half of that. Not half, but close to half in the two year period. Yes, sir. Okay. And so that's why I make sure that 2.1% is the average annual growth from 2008 to 2020. So the, the those numbers don't. The 2.1 percent that we came up with was from 2008 to 2018. Oh, we haven't updated okay. it for 2019 okay. and 2020. But okay. I, I wanted to, I still wanted to add these numbers on there. Uh, for example, 2020, I just got that number today uh, from from Pam. There's 16,500. We projected with 2.1 percent, right? And we had 16,498 connections on 2020, so we were off by 16. Years. Okay, thanks. And then if, if you go to the next slide, it has the total breakdown. It's, uh, it's basically, if you have 13,260 in 2008, then 2009, you have 13,822, but on an average overall, it's approximately 2.1. So on the, on the next slide, you have the full breakdown of your fiscal year with the actual meter connection, your, the water that was treated, average gallons per day per connection, uh, your peak day, your peak hours, and then your average sales. So TCEQ says that you're required to have water demand of 0.6 gallons per minute per connection. But in 2009, our flood applied for an alternate capacity requirement, an ACR, of 0.5 gallons per minute per connection. And that's something that's, that's pretty good because if, if you look uh, on this table at peak gallons per minute per connection, only in year 2011 did it exceed the 0.5. But on an average, it's 0.44. And so we have, you guys right now have an APR of 0.5. So when you plan for the future, it's, it's, it's a good way of, of, of being able to save on capital improvement costs because other entities have to use a 0.6, whereas our club right now has a 0.5. So I, I'm going to keep touching base on that also. Next slide, water demand and treatment capacity. So your average day water demand, uh, a 10-year average for connection of 382 gallons per day or, or 0.3 gallons per minute. 
as calculated by the project team, and that's basically from that same previous table. And then your your, your peak day water demand is 0.44 gallons per minute per connection, which is under the, the 0.5 that I was mentioning. We have another table here to identify that, uh, where your average is 0.27 and your peak is 0.44. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the next slide. Uh, continuation of water demand and treatment capacity. On the water treatment capacity to date, as I mentioned, as of December 31st, 2020, you have 16,508 connections per meter. If you multiply that by the 0.5 gallons per, per connection times 1440, that'll, that'll give you your million gallons per day capacity that's required of, of your plant. If, if you look at the table there, you have a Havana water treatment plant with 3.5 MGD, Abram Road water treatment plant with 6 MGD, 492 plant uh, with 4 MGD, and then in, in an asterisk, we have the Benson Palm water road. Those are 0.88 MGD, but those are not connected to the system. So in reality, TCQ has, has allowed you to use the 14.38 is my understanding, but in reality, you only have 13.5. So if you use the 13.5 compared to uh, to the amount of connections that you have right now, you're basically at 88% capacity. And TCQ recommends that you start planning for additional capacity at 85%. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to the next slide. So basically, they said the total capacity of public water system treatment facilities must always exceed its anticipated maximum daily demand. Based on these regulations, M2 Engineering has projected the increase in water connections throughout the planning year. The district water treatment capacity in 2020 with 16,508 connections must be 11.89 MDD based on future growth projections of the, if, the water, if the water treatment plant is not serviced prior to 2027. When, when we're projecting that you'll have 19,081 connections, you will be at, at 100%. So basically, if you don't have a plant in service by 2027 based on a projection, you're basically at 100%. We've got six years to fund and build a new water plant? Correct. And that's assuming 2.1% growth? And that's assuming 2.1% growth, which, like I mentioned, which is, there has been a spike in, in development, but not, we can't necessarily just use those numbers because just because they develop doesn't mean there's actually a meter on the ground. Just because 100 lots were sold doesn't mean that there's already, there's already a service in the meter. So in, in, in the next slide, we have a, basically a graph that identifies this. So this, is a, this, this next slide is a, basically your, your projected water treatment capacity and basically uh, for some reason, the, the years in the bottom didn't show up, but uh, basically that, that point where 85% capacity is shown, that's actually 2020. And so if you count, if you keep going forward, it's 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. At 27, you're basically at par, where you're at 100%, which was what I was mentioning. Um, same thing in this graph. On the next sheet, on the next slide, we have uh, a table that basically breaks it down by the year, <clears throat> projected connection, current plant capacity, the required plant capacity. And so that's why I say that you have a plant surplus at 20, 27.04, which is you're at 100. What, what year are we at 150 growth rate? Is actually 2.5%. I have to get back to you on that, but it's, it'll be before. So that's basically what the growth rate has been in the last two years. Oh. Okay. Okay. So maybe that'll be something that we can include as part of our uh, revision to our, to our CIT and, and definitely revise our uh, growth rate. On elevated storage capacity, you have a total of 2 million gallons of elevated storage capacity, and TCQ says that for every connection that you have, 
you need to have 100 gallons per connection. So right now you're at one one million six hundred fifty thousand. So you're okay. Uh, but by 2030, you will have exceeded that uh, based on the 2.1. So uh, we're we're basically recommending that eventually throughout these next 10 years, you'll have to plan for an elevated growth. If the growth continues at, at 2.1, and it's at 2.5, definitely for sure. Uh, total storage capacity, PCEQ uh, requires 200 gallons per connection. And I would say right now has a total of 6.55 uh, million gallons. So you, you're, you're good there and even up to 2030, there's nothing that needs to be done in regards to water storage. Only elevated storage. Total storage, I would say it's okay based on that. Based on what the state reports. Next item, uh, distribution capacity. As some of you uh, may be aware, uh, based on the projected growth and, and the municipalities uh, expanding as well, uh, we, we anticipate that throughout the 10 years there will be water distribution upgrade looping. And I also wanted to mention the, the first four priority projects that, that uh, as a consequence of, of the street widening of mile three from Goodwin to Palmville, Liberty from Expressway to mile three, Veteran from Abram to La Homa, FM 2221. There's only two intersections that, that will require some adjustments there to the water line. And that's on Dawson State Highway 107 and on, I believe it's Minnesota State Highway 107. So we, we put a priority rank on those because uh, the mile three, that one's already uh, about to start construction. Liberty Boulevard, the plans are at 90% uh, at, at, at completion. SM 2221, Techstar has notified us that they plan to start letting this, their project out for bid. So uh, we've been working with Mr. Albert Alonso and the rest of the staff to kind of coordinate at those intersections what, what Alice is going to be required to adjust for, for those widening there. And on veterans, uh, the last that was mentioned from uh, LNG engineers was that uh, Alice basically needs to start thinking about relocating their line about December 2020. So that's why we, uh, I mean 2021, that's why I put that one as the last one and the 2022. So based, based on, based on, uh, on, on our study, uh, one, one, the first, one of the projects that, that we put on here uh, is for those Benson Palm water wells that have been just basically sitting there. They're, they're not part of the system, but they're there. Uh, my understanding right now on, on, on those water wells was that that project was initiated years ago and then it got stopped because of environmental issues. issues. But I believe two of the, two out of the three wells are already in place, so I, I believe that that project should be visited. And if it, if it is, it'll basically bring you from 13.5 mgb uh, treatment capacity to 14.38 mgb. So um, another one is uh, the Havana water treatment plant. That one's capable of being expanded uh, for two mgb, and this. This is a Havana plant. It basically serves the Peñitas area, La Jolla area, Southern City area. And uh, it is recommended that the planning and feasibility or an engineering report uh, for this plant extension begin in 2021 so that construction can begin in 2023. And for sure, you'd be having the service you know, prior to 2027. Uh, another, uh, another potential uh, project that we have included in the CIP is a 4 MGP water treatment plant. This would be a complete new plant, uh, and this would be in, in mile 7, mile 8 area between somewhere around Abram and Palm Gill. Uh, and, and basically, whoever is hired to do that feasibility, feasibility engineer report, we recommend that there's uh, some modeling done for the future also to allow additional projects to be put on here for, for the future water distribution. 
and so I think the the model the, the the model needs to be updated for the future growth as well. And so part of that feasibility would be to confirm on the two and the four that 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 we came up with. And so that would be basically the first step into trying to go towards uh, funding. To acquire funds, whether it be with Water Development Board, Mass Bank, USDA, uh, and other agencies. Uh, next slide. We're having an effort to support the expansion of the Havana Water Treatment Plant and meet the raw water demand. The construction of a 20 acre raw water reservoir is planned as part of the capital improvement plan. And this right now is already a Texas Water Development Board project. Uh, right now, it's presently in the planning, acquisition, and design phase. It's actually right now the, the survey and environmental is what, what we're working on at this time. Uh, next item. Here's about a reservoir that would hold the raw water and then be processed into new And we could have a pipe the expansion, the the expansion of the existing. Yeah. Correct. Uh, years ago, uh, I believe in 2011, there were some emergency monies that that uh, that I was not acquired from the Water Development Board. And there was some environmental issues and easement issues with Texas wildlife. And so this was basically repurposed for a reservoir. And this is kind of like phase one of the total project. And the next project would be to have your own pump intake at the river, your own straw, your own straw basically, to fill up this reservoir and not have to depend on an irrigation district. Because during those times that, and that, that emergency period, uh, I was have received letters that basically said, we don't know if we can provide raw water. So if you don't have raw water, you, don't, you can't provide water to your region. So uh, but that's definitely uh, a project. Uh, we were, when the wall was going up, we were kind of struggling to hopefully try and get that to get an easement, but since then, it's kind of slowed down. So, uh, the, the rest of the items that I have on here, the rest of like, Potential future projects is expansion to the to the distribution system. The first one I have on here, besides the, the widening project, is a 12 inch water line along Iowa Road from Mount 3 to Mount 7. Uh, that, that, that same 12 inch water line uh, would also include looping into the new line that was placed that goes from Mendiola Booster up to the Texan Road. And that, that was a recommendation that was provided when from Mother and Hunt. When they uh, there were some subdivisions that came in, and whenever they asked to connect to that line, since that line, the, the whole purpose of that line is to fill the elevated storage tank. Uh, some of the operators don't want uh, subdivisions connected to it. So what we've been doing is we've been asking Mel and Hunt, can you verify on the model to see if you know this development can connect to it? So far, there's been two subdivisions, and I believe one residential wow. that they're going to be able to connect to it. But uh, uh, for future purposes, one of, this pro one of these projects would be to have a loop into that line with support from the mile three standpipe. So you basically have a water line from mile three all the way to 107. And then on mile five, it connects to that line. And then on mile six, it connects to that line again. So basically you have a, a loop a loop system. Um, next one is a 12 inch water line loop between uh, one mile south and Benson Palm Road and Benson State Street. The next one is a 12 inch water line from Havana Water Plant to FM 2221, which is State Highway 107. Uh, and this is uh, along, I forget the name of the road that's just west of La Jolla, the last light, Marachina Road. Road. And that basically provides a whole loop to all the way to the north. The north portion of your system. Uh, the next, the last one that I had on here was 12 inch water line upgrade to the existing water line along Dolphin Road from FM 495 north to the nine mile line and west to Iowa Road and loop south to Mount Seven. So this would basically be the, uh, another loop to that first uh, water line that I was mentioning along the island. Um, from there, uh, just open for questions or comments. I'm 
that a lot of your area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of homes yeah. that don't have. Yeah. It's a lot of wild water wells on there. Basically, the area when 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 y'all lower the impact, between everything north of mile three, mile five, mile six, between Iowa and western and further east, it's opened up to where there's a lot of wild land. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, we you know we we have to go ahead and try to address that growth, and and maybe we need to have another uh, committee to, to look at. Impact fees and all that. You know, are, we, are they paying enough to cover the impact that they're creating with this new development? And uh, because at the end of the day, if that doesn't happen, then we're planning it ourselves to, to impact the rate payers. As far as that impact fee is to charge the developers for the impact they've done to the current system. And they're not paying enough for the same thing with the water rights. You know, uh, we've been subsidizing the water rights for about 40% or so. Because water rights have gone up in cost, but we don't charge that rate. You know, we kept it down there for about 15 years. We never increased the cost of water rights or OUV. So at the end of the day, that passes us and, you know, we pay for water rights. So we need to look at that as well. So that's part of what's happening because of this. How much are the impact we run off? I know we had eliminated what, 1800? Uh, that impact fee? That's $1,900. It used to be. No, it's $1,900 for, for the water rights and I think the impact fee is $100. Yeah, it used to be like $2,000. I probably got it down to, what was it? $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. $1,
because this system doesn't operate and they have to go anywhere else. It goes to it could go to the lift station, the new one that was built there, but we could transfer it to the existing lift station on a temporary basis. And that lift station is, is already sending sewer to the mud. You know, we've been doing that for years since they could do there. And we want to try, try to get customers on board and, and uh, we've talked to sure that and they've been uh, you know receptive receptive to televising that area, finish inspecting that area so we can get that area on board. And uh, and the mud has said they, they could uh, they could receive it uh, based on the flows that we've given them and the number of customers. Uh, Albert, I know you're on the line and I know we were trying to get a, an agreement with them. Can you give us the status of that? Uh, yes, uh, good evening, everyone, members of the board, uh, Science. I, I spoke to them. Uh, we're right now in, in those uh, agreements trying to, uh, he wants, they want to get the number of uh, customers that will be connected uh, to that sewer temporarily. We have about overall 63 residents and about maybe 20 uh, commercials that might possibly uh, connect to uh, that system temporarily. So uh, I gave him those numbers today, uh, earlier today, and he's gonna go back to his board and, and discuss it and come back and, and give us an offer based on uh, if it's something they can do for us and help us with it. Uh, uh, but uh, that's where we're at right now with uh, with MUD. Right, and I believe they were very uh, uh, appreciative or understanding and want to help us out. It's just a matter of finalizing uh, whatever cost it would be and making sure that it falls within our budget in regards to what we would be charging as well. Uh, initially, it all looked good, but they, they we just need for them to say okay, and then they'll bring it up to the board. So we just put it on there, hoping we could get it this week, but we haven't received it. So we're asking that we could just take a look for the next week. But everything's looking very positive from our uh, negotiations. You know, we can help them out with that Richard and all that area, like what, two years ago, a year and a half ago? Mm -hmm. And we helped them out uh, just recently with the freeze as well. And we can bring that up. So, well, no, they, they're they not questioning, they're, right. not, they're not hesitating. They just need to make sure that their numbers are good in their in regard. They don't want to go in, well, we have 10 customers that charge us. They just want to charge us a flat rate for this six to nine months and we will be with them temporarily until, uh, you know, the short term project is completed. Uh, at the same time, you know, we need to be ready for uh, the connections as well because more will is, you know, at a point where they're finishing the LED plant. And they've got to start on OD or the church. So we'll have some, some type of logger there, that, whatever's going into their plant, right? Yes. Yeah, we're, 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 we already have a, we have already, it's already in place. The system's in place. Okay. We're just putting more into that list station that we have there right now before we abandon it when the new list station becomes. <clears throat> So uh, we should have a finalization of this in, in consideration for the board. So we need a motion to table it. If this, if this is necessary because of the delay with the construction that the subject of the tax OG, OG project that Mr. Chapman is briefing us on? Yes. Are we going to talk about that project in a different session? Yes, sir. Okay. So Make a motion table item number six. Second made by lawyer. I need a second. Second. By Sandoval. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven. Discuss possible action or approval to release easement docket 248-2082-ATOR for Palmview Sanitary Sewer Project as requested by property owner for lot two, Central Farm Subdivision, Hidalgo County, Texas. Yes, Mr. President, we will go over to item seven and we will go to the first and see if we show the map. Uh, you see in that uh, uh, map that it's a survey that is done that shows an hour even along the front side of the property. Okay. So we can see that that is the map along the front property. It was an easement that was purchased through the Palm View project, so we could have a sewer line in there. Uh, this. Easement was never utilized. Uh, 
uh, coming from the left or coming from the west, the sewer line stops at that property line and goes around it. So uh, basically, at the end of the day, that easement was never needed or never used. Uh, but the reason we're here is because there's a building that's overlapping into the easement right on the west property line. And you can see that. Uh, Right, uh, encroaching, it says metal block building. Right there, the map, uh, the first, yeah. right there where the number is on the website says 21981. Mm -hmm. Okay, right to the right of that, there's a building. Yeah. And then it's overlapping into a dash line, which is our easement. Mm -hmm. So, what, uh, right now, this property has been sold. And your current order is financing or refinancing. And well, uh, obviously, we, we actually have one on, on the on yeah, the, on the call. Okay, so you want to we'll, 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 let me finish it and then you get on. So they're asking for uh, 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 some, how would I say, a relief, either taking away the four or five feet of it or the whole easement. You know, obviously, it comes with the cost that we did buy it. So we stopped for discussion and we can have the property owner introduce themselves and kind of explain the situation. Yeah, yes, hello. This is uh, Luis Santu. Good evening. Uh, um, th this is uh, I'm, I'm in the situation where uh, I'm looking to get part of you know that building. It's within four feet of the easement. And whenever that building was built, uh, I didn't have this uh, survey. I bought this property. I acquired the property from a bank, and I was issued a a uh, survey. I, I had a survey at the same. It, it was almost at the same time that uh, the the property was acquired, and uh, I was going to buy a uh, survey and. Last year, two years ago, whenever I, I redid redo the survey, I found out that I was the building was within you know the um, the easement, and uh, I, I'm not really you know asking for the whole easement if we can do a barrier it's just uh, twenty just that uh, area of the building that it's four feet and that twenty five feet if we can get just that variance. That, that will be sufficient to uh, do my transaction with banks. And uh, also, I mean, I don't know if them four feet are going to be affected or, or if the ISM is going to be affected, if we're going to have any plans for the future to use these, this easement, but it's still, we, we're, we're still going to have the 16 foot left for the easement. So basically just them four feet of the uh, the building. And, and it's just a variance, just so we can get uh, bank approval. This is minutes for the canal set? There, there's a canal. It's a, it's, a, it's a northwest, the southwest corner of Minnesota and French, right where you turn. There's so you a car lot. You turn on Minnesota that's a car lot. Okay. So it's, uh, we have a, a car wash. Car wash there. Car wash. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's what I was trying to. Which one? Yeah, the car wash. The car wash. Yeah, it's across the uh, across the expressway from the car lot. So it will be the car wash and the uh, barber shop uh, that we recently uh, opened there. Minnesota for the distance for the railway canal is on the east side. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because uh, we have uh, now it's a car watch, and then we have Monte Alto the Valley entrance. No? And then we have the other side. Say, but that's where Ricky got others, the mayor. On the south side of the railway canal, that's where the railway canal is. They're saying. This property is located in the corner of Minnesota and Frontiers Road on the south side. This is the expressway range. Yeah. Is it, you're, you're, you're over here. Yeah. Yeah, because this used to be the car lot. 
Okay. Yeah. Then you have an entrance that goes to Material of the Valle. Then you have a canal. Mm -hmm. and then you have the no, no, you're you are actually on the north side. You're on the north side. This is the south side of the expressway. South side. Okay. So you're you're over here. The expressway is right here. You can see that. So if you're going on the Frontage Road, you turn right on Minnesota. It's that point. Taco Cabana is right there. So it's like this. North is that way, yes. Yeah, so it's like this. Yes. So there's no. Yeah, there's yeah, a car wash, and then there was used to be a house. And the sewer line up there and, and came this way. Okay. So this this actually was not used. Okay, so bottom line is asking for a variance. We, we can talk that, about this with. We need to either, I would say, eliminate the easement or reduce the easement. Okay. So that building cannot be on the easement. So here's uh, what the water code says is that any real property that the district has purchased. Or paid for giving something for value just can't be given away. Okay? If somebody had just granted the easement, for instance, of the previous owner, we went out, y'all might remember to ask, you know, hey, would you give us the easement? Some people did. Right? This was one where the owner didn't agree to give it. And I, and oh. I think the we had was $4,800 was the appraised value. So there's an appraisal that we have saying that the uh, market value of that easement is $4,800. Right? The fair market value in return for whatever it gives up. Okay. Does that mean that they have to get forty eight hundred dollars a note? Okay, that's not what that means. All right. Mm -hmm. He's talking about needing only a small percentage of it. Okay. Um, but the board has the discretion to determine what that fair market value is, right? We can't be arbitrary about it, but there has to be some measured way to say, all right, this is what the fair value is. We will, you know, get rid of the entire easement or some portion of it for, for that value. And that's, that's the discretion uh, that the board has. Mm -hmm. With all your respect, uh, with all your respect, uh, I have uh, another property just down the road. Uh, it's uh, the address will be uh, 463 West Palma Vista Drive. And back in 2014, whenever we were starting this, this uh, sewer project, uh, I was asked if I would, you know, sell my easement, and I decided to donate it. So I mean, it, you know, since I already did something, I, I think that you know, I don't know if that that would be of any uh, value or you know, but I did donate it back in uh, 2014 whenever this whole project started on my other property. Uh, I was UD, or they, they were trying to buy us another. It's for something for a good cause and for something for better for us. So I did a donation. They didn't got paid not even a single dime for it. So I don't know. If and I wish that this owner <laughs> had done the same thing because it, it would be an easy. But like I said, it's, there has, the board has to make some determination about what the fair and reasonable value is. You know, look, what is the value of this? I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert appraiser, but.
Item number eight, discussion possible action regarding impact of February 2021 weather event on water consumption and use by district customers. Yes, we put this on the agenda and it was discussed by everybody that time. Mr. Roy was, we had discussed it before you and I and how to uh, address uh, the impact to the customers because of this week and, uh, and, and and the water consumption that was was the week because there were a lot of water breaks on the customer side due to this week. So uh, a lot of people, a lot of uh, cities around the, the state or are uh, trying to minimize the the, uh, um, the the bill that we should send to them, whether it should just be a, uh, the the lowest rate for the past two or three months, uh, uh, or whether you want to average something out versus a higher bill they might have experienced because of this water. Uh, I know that there's uh, there's the state reps from the Dallas County has to consider this a bill. But it was something that we were already talking about. So it's, it's up for discussion on how you might want to treat it and, and, uh, and, uh, and see how we then the next month cycle uh, and address this issue. Whether we want to just, you know, reduce it to an average for each one or, or just a little sum around, you know, in regards to the residents. And of course, we're going to have the backup with the, with the smart meters that yes. would show a, an actual leak. Yes. So now we're going to get every customer saying, "Hey, I had a leak, and I, and I want to, I want, I want to credit." Yeah, them. we would have to go through that, and if you, you know, just want to average them no matter what, and just charge the lowest. And it would just be at, during that freeze or those right. days. Mm -hmm. During that day, I mean, uh, you can look at a January uh, or December and January bill, and then okay, the February that we deal with. That water consumption, if it was higher, we we'll want to consider it. But we need some direction if you want to consider doing something like that. You know, like some of the rest of the utilities are so, yeah. so what do you recommend with your time? Well, I'm, I'm recommending that we look at that I mean, in an individual basis or maybe have them come in as well. And they always do, but but you know, put it out there and let them know, hey, you know, there's some relief here. Just show us what you have or, or come in and request it. And we're talking about how many days into consideration are we going to take this place? You know, we could take about, you know, uh, five days. Five days? Yeah, five days. No less than five because, you know, a lot of people were impacted and we didn't even get to them or they didn't even get to get a plumber to, to fix it because they were busy. You know, by the time they got to that house, it was probably three days later or four days later. Yeah. So anywhere from five to ten days? Yes, yes, ma'am. So we can do an average or we can do like a leak adjust. Right. Mm -hmm. So we'll know what the board decides. Yeah, fine. Decide. Good. Um, good. Which one? When you say an average, you're talking about for like a month, like what their average water bill was over the, over the past month and three months. Yeah. And, just, and then have the system generate a bill for that amount? For that amount. What do you think is Mr. Green? Well, you got to be consistent, and if you, I think, if you run some risk, if you just do a blanket, um, you know, to everybody, you're going to have somebody that's going to have a higher bill than they would have had, uh, you know, but for this. And so I think if you just hit it across the board, it, it could be uh, more difficult. It, it seems like there ought to be, uh, I, I think the board ought to, Come up with an idea, but it needs to be customer driven. You know, the customer uh, believes their water bill was too high due to some break, then they have the affirmative obligation to come in. But now the board would need to set the direction on what option the district would have because it can't just be a uh, teller sitting there and making a decision. It would need to be okay, here's what the district is allowed to do. And that would be to give you the uh, the lowest of the last three months, for instance, some set uh, relief for those customers that come forward. That way, because nobody can come forward if uh, if my bill is too low. You know. So, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're 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 I want to say we're the only district that doesn't even get to begin with in the whole valley, uh, and you know with customers. 
customers. Uh, but, you know, we could easily just post a notice, come in, and you experience high water usage, you know, we'll work with you on the just because we do that already. Our customer service reps, you know, I think we do around about two days, you know, uh, we do around 25 or 40, depending on, on, on the month. Uh, where we make each you can get so you're saying to go like on a individual uh, base, uh, people who come in and, and yeah. come in and ask us. Yeah. Right. And we'll just send over here at the office or we'll send over put it on the website or okay. Facebook, put it at the office. Does that work, Mr. Green? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. So my motion, or if, if I make a motion, what would it be that we would be sent to the register? I think you'd say you'd authorize the general manager to implement a policy to uh, equalize individual customers' water bills that were excessive because of water leaks during the pandemic. Write it down. Write it down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Motion to whatever Mr. Bean just said. But... <laughs> okay, so it would be. Uh, I mean, you authorize it. Uh, if, if you want to do that, because otherwise the board's got to, you know, the board can't sign on everything you want. But the board certainly has the authority to authorize the general manager to make equitable adjustments to bills during the month of February of 2021 due to the storm. So then he could, you know, implement those policies, uh, you know, based on discussions with that. Okay, so uh, I'll take a motion, and if I mess up, you can correct me. Uh, I make a motion uh, to authorize our GM to uh, at least post a notice and uh, deal with the. Uh, uh, February leak due to the freeze. On, uh, implement policy. Implement policy. For equitable adjustments. Now I'm going to. I'm going to. Okay. Like I'm <laughs> 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 I don't want to do the motion no more. <laughs> so I think it was just the GM to, to uh, handle any any leaks that uh, due, due to uh, our February freeze. Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. Um, is that? <laughs> I, I think that, that is. Okay. Uh, I have a motion by Mr. Lawyer. Second. Second by Council Law. All in favor, second by the same Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> yeah, I'm not always going to do that all for you. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I don't remember nine. The second possible action on the appointment of board and staff committees to review and make recommendations regarding how was the bylaws, rules, and policies. Yeah, so um, there are, you know, over the, the history of the district, uh, predating uh, myself and, and everyone on the board, there's been, uh, there was an original set of bylaws that were uh, implemented after the district came out of receivership, whichever year that was. Um, those, those bylaws have been amended over time, and as, in any, as with any set of documents, you know, Somebody makes a change in one paragraph with good intentions, and all of a sudden, it's, you know, conflicts with another one or becomes unclear. Like, for instance, it, uh, when we started looking at uh, the bylaws in the last month, it wasn't exactly clear, for instance, like what authority the general manager would have to make certain purchases or enter into certain contracts, just because of the way that the bylaws uh, were drafted. You know, no, no management or anything like that. And so um, then when you start looking at the uh, procurement policies that the district has implemented, and there's been some changes up time, they just kind of, you know, it was like, you know, put a band-aid here and then patch there, band-aid there, and all of a sudden well, it looks like a mess. And, and we're not, we're, a mess is an exaggeration, um, but, but they, they can use some fine tuning. let's put it that way. And so but most of them are just, legal nature, you know, legal writing and things of that nature with respect to the bylaws and the policy. Of course, then the, the board would have the, the authority to, you know, consider whether or not certain uh, expenditure policies are out of date, you know, something that used to, you know, you needed to do a certain process for a $500 expenditure, and now that's, you know, not nearly as big a deal, and maybe you make a change that, or maybe you don't. 
Um, but that's that's something that I brought up to the board president as far as something that that I think would be good to just essentially combine all amendments, all changes into one clean set of documents so everybody going forward know that this is the set of bylaws and oh I, and like for instance I had sent me one point oh wasn't there an amendment back then and she said oh yeah oh yeah here it is so it, it would just be easier if, if there was a new clean set of bylaws and procurement policies. And typically how that's done is that a committee would get formed and that committee would make recommendations of, you know, legal would then, you know, draft up to you know, make recommendations. And then those uh, proposed changes, if any, would go to the, the board uh, for review and approval. I know, Mr. Science, uh, we have talked about also fees, policies, hmm. and some fees. At the end of the day, after we put this in, we said, Let, let's throw everything in. We <clears> went <throat> yeah. several committees. What kind of fees are we talking about? Well, you know, all our fees, whether they're uh, connection fees, uh, you know, some middle fees, I mean, they're, they're eight to 10 years old. I mean, we didn't need to visit them. We made a presentation at one of our yeah, budget workshops. Budget workshop. workshop. And showing you, you know, where we are and where others are, and how long we've been there, and then we can do the same presentation in the workshop. But you know, it's getting to the point where, you know, costs are going up for everything, materials, batteries, whatnot. And we're not changing anything to stay up. You know, so those fees that we need to look at, uh, you know, we add up. And you know, gas goes up, so we have to go out there and make the connection with the you know, it's too hot. It adds up, so uh, if we can incorporate those as well, and maybe have a different committee for rates and fees or whatnot, you know, uh, I'd like to consider that as well, incorporate it into this, and maybe have one or two or three committees higher or more design. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna recommend for the actual Alvarez bylaws, uh, Maribel Diaz, Esmer Solis, and myself, and legal. On the rules and policies, um, also, uh, oh sorry, alternate uh, would be uh, Ivan Sandoval, and the board members, rules and policies, uh, Maribel Diaz, Esmer Solis, myself, legal, and general manager and staff, wherever you need, Mr. Sign. We would have to get approved, Matt. Okay, all right. So, the, so we've got a committee for bylaws that's being discussed in the proposed committee for bylaws and procurement policy. Yes, sir. Okay. And then the next committee would be for what topic? Uh, the rules and policies would be the, the same committee. Okay, so when you're talking about rules, we're talking about the rules of the district, which include rates and, and all yes. those things. Okay. So those are third. Uh, policies. Like employment policies and things like that? Yes, Mr. Sines. Okay. And, and I have uh, spoken about them. Also, I haven't found the one that's an alternate. Okay, so the. There's three committees that are being proposed, and I didn't write down the names, but uh, we'll let you know when we have. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. We make a motion or? Okay. Yeah. yeah, we need to make a motion. I think it, it might be, for the record, it might be clear if you made, if there was a motion to create those committees, and then you could have a discussion on the, um, Who's going to be involved, or who's going to be on it? But it's 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 how we all want to handle. Well, the president can appoint. Well, appoint or recommend. Uh, so I'm recommending. The bylaws aren't clear. On no. <laughs> uh, well, I'm recommending the committee, so the board needs to vote on it. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Let me yeah. Look, let me look. The board needs to vote. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Because uh, it is clear. Okay, that's right. The president may establish mm -hmm. and designate board members for advisory committees and appoint their chairman for formulation of policy recommendations to the board or for such other purposes as the president may designate. 
Okay, so there does not need to be a board approval. I think it's prudent that you put it on the, the uh, agenda and discuss it, but the board president has the authority uh, on his own to create those committees who then make recommendations to the board. So those committees don't make decisions, they just make recommendations that will come to the board. And that is within the discretion of the board. Okay. Yeah. So, so those three committees. Uh, so we don't need a motion, we need approval or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Next item, uh, item number 10, general manager report, item May, January financials, Mr. Science. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. President, member of the board, uh, we have a good month in January. Uh, our operating revenues were 8% which are aligned with the month of January as projected. Our operating expenses were only at 6%, so, you know, about 2% difference right there, so hopefully it sticks that way. Uh, the numbers in regards to, the, uh, to our balances and, and resources are, are, are staying pretty, uh, pretty equal over the, the next month. Now we are, uh, you know, hoping that we get some revenues in there from some reimbursable so we can pick up our, our uh, Our investments and, and have some more cash on hand. Uh, we're, you know, we also did the same thing, as you know, in regards to uh, our uh, our balances in regards to uh, water bills. And you know, we had started locking before because we had over two hundred fifty thousand dollars on tape bills. Trying to, we have been collecting them ever since we started. Obviously, we stopped during the month of February because of the fees, but you know, uh, people are realizing that. They owe the water and we need to get paid back. So it's part of our budget. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to take a step, you know, into that hopefully in the next week and put the notices out again. And when we start, and people are coming in to make payment plans, and for some of them, we're just paying the full amount because they know they're over. And it's just, you know, part of our provide water and the cost. It, it, it is, we're seeing that. It's are there any questions about the situation? One, the months look good? Yeah, so far we're in good shape. I mean, uh, compared to what the previous year, so these months, um, hopefully, uh, are you curious about the summer months? You know, uh, the water are you feeding? I know that summer months you should provide more the rain. So, I mean, I'm very curious, you know, how is that? I mean, so far, I mean, like, 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 from a financial perspective, this is like a good month. So, hopefully, it gets our unallocated revenues for January and February are higher than last year. We take out the emergency water that we sold the water. Yeah. So it's our comfort Okay. Any questions for the board? Good. Good. Lawyer? Good. 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 Next item, item B, it's the Water Development Board, uh, Palm, Palm View Sanitary Sewer Improvement. Mr. President, we might just have that discussion in the next session. We have to start from the line. Okay. It's already item A. Fix it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Item C, NetBank Technical Assistance uh, Agreement, Sewer Hookups. So we, did, we just had one of our Sabbath meetings uh, for this project for the Palm View Yard Line project. Tuesday with, with Mad Bank, uh, Awasan, and, and uh, the contractors. And as of, as of today, they have 687 lines of uh, service connections installed. Out of those 687, 397 have been connected. And 290 septic uh, tanks have been plugged and hauled. And 215 have been fully decommissioned and filled with them. Okay, uh, you know, sorry to interrupt you. 397 are already pending waste submission? Yes. Correct. And total connections is 687. Correct. And 290 septic tanks have been pumped. Pumped. And how many decommissioned? 250 out of the 290. You have like a chart of, of, of I was going every month, but I, I, I've been asking for a few months. I can work on some people. Okay. 
but overall they're doing pretty good. They, oh, they oh, it overall, they, they started stepping it up really just this past week and a half after the freeze because January and February were extremely slow, uh, but even December as well. So but what was the reason for it being slow? Um, crew, yeah, it, it, it's been basically that they've been having a hard time trying to keep trying to keep people employed. Uh, they lose some people, uh, their excuse is that they lose some people because of the unemployment rates that are being given out. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. they, but starting, uh, yeah, not, this, not this Monday, but the previous Monday, they have, right now they have a total of nine, nine crews installing lines. And they have two additional two additional crews, but the two men crews that are that are pumping and decommissioning them. So okay. they they started meeting the daily goals and kind of exceeding the daily goals for the last week and a half. But before that, it was it was pretty slow to the point where uh, I think in the previous meeting we said they were two two months and two weeks behind. They're two months and three weeks behind. So so they're kind of my concern when when they're doing they're doing another slower than everybody else. No change orders. Exactly. <laughs> Which comes to my next. <laughs> uh, don't start. <laughs> now they they have they have a uh, they have sessions and we discussed a potential change order uh, on 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 some on some items, but we're still kind of talking to them about it. We still need to talk to Mr. Tyson and the rest of the staff and as well as our inspectors and and go verify. Uh, there's just a different couple of items that. We'll probably be able to bring up uh, during the next one. So it's a change order on something that's dramatic, right? Like a septic tank yes, under like a house. Yes, there was a septic like tank under a house. Uh, right. One of them was excavation. There was concrete. Um, they're claiming several homes that uh, during during the Hannah uh, during the Hurricane Hannah that that uh, people were opening the the cleanup and they weren't connected yet. So with the with the suction and then not then not being connected at both ends that it lifted it in some areas they had like a total of 21 homes that they had to fix not maybe not the entire area but they had to replace them there. So that's what they're claiming and so we're still kind of in discussion with them. And we're still at that the one year deadline, right? Are we gonna we're we gonna so reach that? right now we that? right now they've exhausted 237 days. Uh, they have 26. Rain days, including the freeze days. Uh, so, if you had that uh, subtracted by the, the one year that was on the project, they have 154 days. And you think we're going to get there? Um, I think they're going to get to the area where uh, phase two is still not completed. And so, I think, in my opinion, is that they're going to have even a bigger excuse. Or to be given days because uh, no, when, when, they, when, they, when they first started, LNG was not ready yet, and so they were installing the services but not connecting them, and they had to go back and and, and do all those. So of course they're, they're, they're claiming that they that they're that they're due days on that, and then uh, based on based on what they've done so far, there are a couple of months by the time they get to the the, the sure tech side. And if SureTech's not fully completed, there's only a certain area that we can isolate uh, where they can move to. But eventually, if, if the SureTech's not completed, then then they're going to go back to installing the lines, but not fully connected. So, okay. Now well, we have SureTech and we're taking session, right? Correct. Right. Um, we, we went through, uh, throughout the month, we went through, through several conflicts. Uh, I don't know if you want to add this or science on one of them. Where uh, there was excessive, uh, I guess, wipes, and I think there's like there's a, a a flyer, and I believe it's going to be placed on Facebook where we're basically letting customers know to try and avoid flush and wipes. They do say flushable, but they don't. Uh, they get sometimes they 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 clog up, and uh, even the Canon TV had it on Facebook, so. Is anyone do that? It's hard to change something to do for 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 fall advertisement. Uh, I was just thinking. I don't know. I think you're good. Uh, maybe we can. Well, I don't think 
slacking off on stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> International contract and web hosting services for the district. Matt? So, it became international. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I can bring up a little oh, okay. bit. Obviously, okay. uh, we had uh, we had, uh, tried, we met with them several times and uh, tried to come up with a negotiated agreement where we could just be having be the web hosting. Uh, and uh, as we wanted to, we both in uh, doing the the actual PR stuff and press was in that on a nasty basis. Uh, we came up with some numbers and uh, at the end of the day, uh, they decided that they didn't want to uh, agree with the numbers and we were proposing. So uh, we, you know, we had Mr. Pena uh, looking at the end of the road termination. And that's where it's at unless you talk to 
Uh, no, not yet. But so, so the the district has notified them that they terminated the contract. Of course, if they you know took legal action, you know, they haven't at this point, or they kind of demand or anything. If they did, we could uh, address it, and I could advise you on you know course of action. But I don't. We'll just we'll see. You know, there's uh, um, I don't believe it would be prudent on their part to do that. You know, um, so what was the, the, the reason for for letting them go again? Because uh, like I said, I've been I know I don't want to ask them, but yeah, no, no, no. Uh, 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 well, um, that's what we'll just say. There's there's a cost component, and okay. there was discussion the the about yeah. whether or not we were actually using the services. That, that you know there was a monthly charge and the then. I think there was some discussion of, well, okay, we did the newsletter once last year. Why are we paying $4,500 every month? Um, that was the discussion. Well, I mean, the, the reason that we had that one, I was, when I was a little bit more involved before I got sick, was due to the, the law that Senator Julian Holza passed on the bill. We needed someone to be constantly on our website. I mean, I, I know that was the reason why we had you. Am I right? Am I wrong with you, Brian? No, I think we were seeing a lot of that going on, and I think that was one of the reasons why we brought it up because we weren't seeing enough stuff going on okay. on our website to justify the amount that we were getting. We're willing to pay them at a needed basis. When they would yeah. do the work, we're willing to pay them for that. Mm -hmm. But they didn't want to negotiate with Mr. You got two numbers. You got one number that, that they use for the website itself? Okay. Yeah, I think it was 344. And then the other one is to do PR and in general. In general. And, and obviously, KM was able to make a presentation. And mm -hmm. felt, well, you know, we need website. So let's talk about the website and see what number we can come up with. It feels really nice compared to what they had or whatever prices are, whatever business is not. Uh, we were even asked them if, well, you can do, you know, you could do the PR, but in an as needed basis, it's per cost, get a get a quote, and, but they chose, uh, they didn't want to do that. They wanted to be, they want to retain them. They stay on where they were at. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. No other questions, comments from the board? No. Okay, item 11, executive session. Pursuant to the Texas Open Meeting Act and Texas Government Code, section 551.001, consultation with attorney, 551.072, regarding real property, 551.073, prospective gifts, 551.074, personal matters, and 551.076, security. Item A, Texas Water Development Board, Commerce Sanitary Sewer Improvement Project. Item B, discussion regarding case number. C-3353-20-I, dash 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 SMB Infrastructure versus Agua Special Utility District in District Court of Isabel County, Texas, 398th Judicial Court. Item C, discussion regarding case number C-3856-20D, dash dash Marvin D. Turbine versus Agua Special Utility District, Morwell, LLC, SMB Infrastructure, LTD, and in District Court of Isabel County, Texas, 206 Judicial District. Item D, discussion regarding IPA service contract. Item E, discussion regarding previously terminated contract for professional legal services. Item F, Mendiola water storage tank projects. And I'm gonna add item number seven, discussion possible action on approval to release easement docket 248-2082, AC0R, for Palm Beach Sanitary Sewer Project as requested by the property owner for lots two, Secure Land Farms Subdivision, is out of County, Texas. I need a motion at 7.40 to go into executive session. So moved. Motion based by Son Dabar, I need a second. Second. Second by Solis. All in favor, Son Dabar, by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Are we staying here? I'm on moving.
I need a motion to come out of executive session at 9 p.m. So moved. I have a motion by Sandoval. I need a second. Second. Uh, uh, second by Solis. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 12, discussion possible action regarding items discussed in executive session. There's no action. No discussion. No, no discussion. No. 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 no discussion. <laughs> I make a motion to bring back item number seven. Okay, I have a motion by Loya. I have a second by Sandoval. All the favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, discussion possible action or approval to release Eastman, docket 248-2082-HCOR for Palm View Sanitary Sewer Project as required by property owner for lots two, Citron Land Farm, Subdivision, Dallas County, Texas. As uh, we discussed in open session previously this evening, uh, the water code is going to require that the district get some get reasonable value uh, for any real estate that it paid for, and that is what happened here. There was 4,800 approximate dollars paid to acquire the season. Now, the board has the discretion to make a determination as to what the fair market value of that of acquiring that easement from the the, the current landowner would be. The board can consider things such as whether or not there's any value to the district for the use of that easement. The board can consider the fact that none of that easement is being used. The board can consider all those factors when making a decision on the fair market value that it would be willing to accept in order to surrender it. So uh, with that uh, understanding and with the legal advice that we got during the executive session, uh, the, the board now has an opportunity to make a discussion and uh, decide if it's going to assign a, a market value to that easement that has been requested to see. Uh, I would say this too is that uh, it would be less expensive to the district to abandon the entire easement uh, than it would to cut it up and just cut off like the four or five feet uh, that, that, that the current landowner has suggested. So that's another factor I think that the board can I'd be willing to consider when it's deciding on what the fair market value is to meet the minimum requirements of water. Well, I make a motion, I, I, uh, as Mr. Beebe said, it has been, a, uh, I guess, uh, defined or, 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 or we discovered that, that this, uh, this line has no value to it. And the best thing for us to do uh, for the greater good of the entity and the repair is to um, go ahead and abandon this line. And after having a, a lengthy discussion during the executive session, I think a fair price would be $250. That's my motion. I have a motion by Mr. Loy. Second. I have a second by Madam Ms. Diaz. I'll defer for a second about the same Before we take that, well, let me clarify. Sorry. That would include the uh, no, landowner. I'm the cost. Yes, sir. Okay. So 250 That was my motion. I'll defer for a second about the same Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to come out of adjournment at, or to go into adjournment at 9.03. So moved. I have a motion by Sandoval. I need a second. Second. Yeah. Oh. Uh, second by Solis. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Done.